So today I'm going to present the mission of World of Education for Humanity of the Future. The title means a lot to me because this education is not for a child to be successful in the world, but implication here is that this education contributes to the hum future of humanity. If we are successful supporting this education, we will change the world. We imagine children coming from the world of light, where they are, they are united and filled with love and connectedness, and there's no fear, doubt, hatred. But we come here in our body to separate ourselves from the others and from the world. When baby is in mother's body, right, room, then they are united with mother. They don't even recognize mother is there. But after birth, the child can recognize, oh, there's a mama, yes. So that's the first recognition of freedom. The child is free from a mother. Then, when we are free, what can we do? Are we going to choose, unite, reunite ourselves with the light and love, or still using the freedom to further separate? and going into the, the world of hatred and doubt and fear. So what can we do during the time they are still close to the light? And our purpose of education is educating children in a way they can retain the light in themselves when, so they can kindle their inner light and inner freedom and inner love when they are completely isolated. So that is the purpose of education going through the very difficult time in our human life. I painted two types of human being here. And one picture has a blue around the head and red around the limbs. And the blue is the thinking forces and the red is the will forces. Usually we think thinking in the head and action in the limb. So this is kind of a natural way to portray a human being. But I'd like to take a look at the other one. It has a kind of two double laminate skate. And there's a red in the head and a blue in the limbs. Means not only thinking forces, but the will is in the head. And not only will forces, but the thinking in the limbs. The blue head is, I categorize, human of the past. And the red head, I categorize as human for the future. And there are the result of different type of ed education. One type of human being is educated from top-down manner to enhancing the thinking forces in the head and will forces in the limb. Then others are bottom-up education, which bring the real forces in the head and the thinking forces in the limb. When the thinking forces is in the head and there's no will in there, means the thinking is already crystallized and there's no way of growing. So what I know is the best, what I know is it. I don't have to do anything. That crystallization means there's no evolution in thinking. Versus somebody who has the will in the head can keep learning and can keep attaining their wisdom for life, right? That's the archetype of lifelong learner. So you, we want our student to leave see the world with that clear will in the head so they can learn for life. Let's take a look at their heart. That feeling region and you can see the one is the blue head and the red limb and the heart is closed like X and what they know they can have sympathy and what they don't know the mystery is antipathy which means they they are bound to their sympathy and antipathy relation to what they are familiar with or unfamiliar with that's a big question of diversity. We tend to like what we know and tends to be fearful about what we don't know. 
So our education will foster our heart to be open to unknown. So you can take a look at the other picture of the redhead and blue rim and heart is open to the world. Heart open human being can be inclusive and wonder about they don't know. Right? So we can they can unite to they have never encountered with, never learned with curiosity and authentic interest. In order to bring a unity, we have to have a bigger picture of like or dislike. Children, I like children to see, yeah, I like this, I don't like that, but both important. How can we work together? So that is an open heart question. So World of Education is the wholehearted education and everybody has to learn Japanese, music, movement, you read me, regardless if they, are, they like or not, because that's good for you. It's good for them. How can we attain the bottom-up education in the real life? We see the baby not blank slate. They are already a genius. They are already perfect in their knowledge. They came from the light. They came from the universe. They have a memory, very sleepy, vague memory of all the knowledge from the universe. That's what we see children. They are being of light. That makes us humble. That makes us striving to be better teacher each day. So we all, as parents know how genius the baby is. So that's why this, we seek the best education for them to unfold who they are. What they don't have is a skill to articulate, identify, or communicate what they already have. So that is the purpose of education. We need to teach them skill of communication, articulation, identification, or differentiation of their wisdom. For child of zero to seven, your preschool teacher and kindergarten teachers will really try to foster the sense of touch, sense of movement, sense of life, and sense of balance. We call that the four fundamental senses. The bottom-up education means we will not try not to touch the head, but stimulating their limb so they can make connection with the limb and feeding life senses, then that can gradually awaken that genius in the head rather than put our head content into their head. That's the top-down education to bottom-up education. And through the play, they're actually doing the scientific experiment. They play with water, they play with rocks, play with woods, and they can really imitate and learn their gesture gesture of water or gravity. So this full, the, their play is full of a science experiment. That's very really important. They need to experience the world with their limb during this zero to seven. The next is seven to 14. That is elementary years and middle school years. The social learning is one of the most important part. Rather than teacher tell the children what to do, children can learn from one another. So that's why we just create this big school of fish and school, will, school of fish can learn together and there's a joy and that memory go deeper, deeper into their feeling life. And artistic experience is another important element. With art, the world is good, the beautiful, world is beautiful, world is a good place and they can make the feeling connection to the very complex content through the art. So that's why we bring the eurythmy, poetry, speech, music, color, geometry, drawings, handcraft, modeling, writing, sculpture, architecture, so many different elements of arts is brought into their uh, education as a medium. So through the artistic experience, that memory stays for life rather than bringing that uh, abstract thoughts 
on their head that can be forgotten next day, but the feeling experience will stay for life, right? The field trip, yes, or food or cultural experience. We want to really um, educate the children into their feeling. Everything is united. For example, fourth grade, they learn animal. Yes, there's a lion, but the lion is so different from the mouse. What is the differences? So that's making the relationship between lion and mouse rather than learning lion cut off from the world. So where the lion is living in, what is the uh, gesture, what is the habits, right? What's different between this animal, this animal? In the, in the end, the question comes, what is a human being? Right? Who am I? That first question of who am I can be learned from the contrast with the animals. What the human being is, that is the deepest question we have. It's really important for parents and teachers to understand this teenage years, very, very hard, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, really hard. This is the hardest time in our, their life. Their head is blue and their limb is red and heart is closed. That is a teenager is. So many teenagers feel, oh my goodness, I cannot handle this. Right? They, they can be torn with the thinking and the will because it's become both really strong. And you can see their heart is closed in a way. You know, I love my friend, but I don't like you. I don't like the world. You don't have to tell me anything. You, so who do you think you are? So that's just really natural for the teenager. Then if we understand this, we can actually help them to bring the will forces further into the head and thinking forces in the them in a way they don't have to reject. So how can we do that? Intellectual development with the powerful emotions, right? And learning the world through abstract thinking. They can now do the abstract thinking and they can see the world with more critical way. So how can we utilize that? It's a different way to educate is developing critical thinking capacity through one is observation, second is comparison, third is analysis, and the fourth is synthesis. Main focus on the ninth grade is all about observation, tenth grade is comparison, eleventh grade analysis, and twelfth grade, by the time of twelfth grade, they can finally see the bigger picture of synthesizing everything. So. We want to bring that consciousness with those four years of development and so they can actually attain objectivity beyond their sympathy and empathy. Through the experiment, reflection, question, dialogue, that, is, that has to be there in each class so they can participate in truth seeking. So give them a lot of opportunity to have that discernment of what is really true. So that is the foundation, a critical foundation of the uh, high school years ed education. But hopefully through it, this education, they can overcome and they can pass through the teenage years and unite themselves with the world again. I'd like to mention a little bit of the subject classes because nowadays the mathematics, science, language arts are the core we call the core curriculum and subject classes are kind of nice options and some students like some subjects some students doesn't like subject so but i'd like to bring some deeper meaning of why we bring the subject we have language learning requires open hearts and live in the world of unknown and take everything they know and create an assumptions. So this way of learning foreign language will give them a strength and confidence to go anywhere in the world of unknown. So they go into the new world of mathematics, technology, the medical, or music. The first thing they need to do is learning languages. 
they need to learn the language of technology. They have to learn language of medical. That is actually the center purpose of learning foreign languages. So you read me is the social movement and they have to be in the current of the current is created in the world in the classroom. They need to be part of it and also they need to see the bigger picture of why we do this. What kind of form is created by the flock of birds. So we, they can attain the higher consciousness of being within and being without. And within that movement, there's music, language, colors, geometries. So, so many things they learn at the desk will be expressed in the movement that can be integrated within their body. So that's a really powerful education we can give to children. They can, through you with me, they can find in the space in between music and geometry. Oh, they are relating. Music and mathematics. Oh, they are relating. And the color and poetry and the language. Oh, that's, that's relating. So everything unites within the movement. And handwork. Yes, of course, we need to cultivate fine motor skill in children, but it's not only that. Handwork means I'm going to need the sweater or mitten, but what they do is casting on and knit, pearl, knit, so that the action itself can be repetitious, tedious, very small, but the in the end, they can create a big sweater with it. So they need to cultivate their own perseverance and joy in those most can be seen as a tedious and repetitious work. And also they can learn how to think and how to weave and knit their thoughts. I have a thoughts. The first step is this. Second step is that. Step is so they can weave the thought. And the theater, we do the play every year. And that's also another uh, beautiful education we can give is theater means I can be a king, I can be a queen, I can be a beggar, and I can be miserable, I can be joyful, and I can be a crown. But who am I? I can be everything, right? And there's always a script behind that gives us the different relationship to life. Just even if I'm sorrowful now, yes, we can immerse ourselves in a drama, but at the same time, myself can watch over miserable myself, knowing some, some time comes and the joy will come again. So everything is drama, and I can be completely different um, character and a completely different stage set that give them a freedom. World of education fosters the capacity of human being. It's not about what's in their head. This is education for capacity of a human being into the unknown future. So this education was created 100 years ago, 1919, with a picture of, from there, 400 and 600 years later. So that was created for the human of the future. So this capacity and quality we need whenever we go, wherever we go, whatever the condition of the world is. That whatever the condition of the world is, those human beings can create the best for the humanity and have, can have the discernment of what I can do, what is my contribution for the betterment of the world. So the conclusion is the whole of humanity needs this education for the betterment of the world and humanity. And regardless of race, gender, religion, and wealth. So all the, from me, my, from my heart, all children need this world of education. All humanity deserve this education to be able to unite the world together. <laughs>